the bluebird tunes up his magic flute. He's as sharp as a blade, warbling as he goes. The sunbeams serenade. The baker man goes a root toot toot. He's improving his trade only because he knows the sunbeam serenade. Fold up your umbrella. He's Smile on your old lapel, wrap your dreams in brocade, put on your Sunday clothes and join the joy parade, open up your heart and sing the Sunbeam Serenade. Light a panatella, blow a dream my way, take it easy. Hey, Princess, you got a good horse for today? I'll say I have. Bet your money on that sunny sunbeam serenade. Just a minute, young lady. You got no business operating a hack at your age. Let me see your driver's license. She's 12 years old. Her old man's laid up with arthritis. That's no excuse for breaking the law. I got a good mind to lock you up. Oh, have a heart, Riley. Oh, it's a heart you want, is it? Oh, well, that's a different story. <laughs> uh... How be that to girl, huh? Gee, Mr. Riley, for a minute there, you had me worried. <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, am I late for work? See you at lunch. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> What are you doing? What's wrong with you? You know you were driving over 35 miles an hour? A minute. 35 miles an hour? A minute. This car won't go an hour. Ah, uh, you. Well, hello, boys. How are you? Glad to see you. Hello, Joe. What are you doing around here? What's wrong, Joe? Didn't they want a band leader up at Camp Saratoga? Oh, me and my big mouth are in trouble again. Why don't you see your dentist? Quiet. What's wrong? I had to go around camp bragging how I knew every big star on Broadway and could round him up for the big camp show. So what happens? So the captain gives me four days leave to bring a show up to camp. And so far I got nobody but the princess to sing, not even a slug to make a phone call. Joe, you're welcome for my last quarter. Yeah, you are, Joe. You owe me a quarter. Thanks, that's a lifesaver. What's the idea? What do you mean he owes you a quarter? Did you give him the quarter? No! Then he owes it to me. Well, you took it from me! But he's got it now. I will break even, won't I? I hope. I, hope. I mean, I've... Oh, Princess. Wilbur. Oh, I never could fool you. Hello, Princess. How's my best girlfriend? Fine, thank you, Wilbur. How's my best boyfriend, Finnegan? He's hungry. Hello, Finnegan. I love this horse. Finnegan, I got something for you. You must know I love you if I want to share, share my candy with you. And a cute. Can't take them. Yeah, you're gonna hurt your teeth, you crunch it like that. Wilbur, you shouldn't give him peppermint candy to eat. It's bad for his teeth. He likes peppermint candy. Oh, she's right. You've spoiled the horse's appetite. Now he won't eat his father. Eat his father? Mm hmm What do you think Finnegan is, a cannibal? No, she's going to hang his father on his nose. And he's gonna look funny with his father on his nose. He eats his father every day. Finnegan eats his fodder every day? For sure. Well, what's his fodder eat? He eats his fodder. Oh. And what's his mother eat? Well, she eats her fodder. Mm-hmm. It's getting worse all the time. Oh, what's well, she's talking to you? Must be Father's Day. Any luck, Joe? Not a bit. Well, keep on trying. You'll get there. Anything I can do to help you, Princess? No, thank you, Gilbert. I'll show you a glass. Will you excuse me while I have my lunch? Finnegan hates to eat alone. Have a sandwich, Uncle Wilbur? <sighs> no, you don't. Trying to steal a little girl's lunch. Oh, there's something in my eye. Yeah, take my handkerchief, dear. Thank you. Everything all right? Uh huh. Ow! Ow! Come here. Come here. What? what? I'm sorry. Come down here. How do you mean it? It's not his fault. He's hungry. Yeah, Joe. I ain't had a teen eat all day with those lady fingers. 
Wilbur, you break my heart. Come on across the street. We'll see what Kitty can do for us today. See you later, dear. Bye. It ain't raining. Why the umbrella? Who knows? I'm a Damon Runyon character. Tea biscuit. What a horse. What a horse. Yeah, but how are we going to get out to the racetrack? Why don't you hire his taxi cab? Uh, $30 a month, but the bathroom's at the other end of the hall. Quite a hike. Have lunch with us. We'll go inside and talk it over amongst ourselves together. Thank you for the invitation. That's very nice of you. Take a check, please. I'd rather have cash. You'll have to take a check. Tilt. What's the matter with you? Hey. Hey, take it easy, will you, my friend? I mean, when I've got my ticket on the floor, you with your golf shoes on, you punch holes in it. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, you can have mine. Oh, thank you. Ha, missed. Huh? You got me. Over. What happened? I did it again. So you go out and eat a dollar and a half, way, And don't even sit with us. These ain't my checks. Oh, big man, big man. Going around picking up other people's checks. Oh, here, pick up mine. All right. I'm going to Grover! Who's going to pay for these checks? I got an idea. Let's gamble to see who pays. I don't gamble. My mother told me never to gamble. And furthermore, gentlemen, you invited me in here for dinner. Sure, but we didn't say we'd pay for it. We'll have a quiz contest. A push yeah, contest? Yeah. Now, me and the boys will each put up five bucks. And we'll each ask a question. And all you got to do is say the checks to each question. If you don't say checks, you're stuck. All I got to do is say the checks to three questions? That's right. Okay. Now, here, you ready? The first question. What would you do if you were going to have something more? What would you eat? The checks. How do you like that? Second question. If you had another cup of coffee, what would you stir it with? The checks. He's tough. Last question. If you were to win this contest, what would you rather have? The money or the checks? The checks! Okay, there they are. Okay, here you are. <laughs> I win all the checks, eh? Huh? Now you guys ain't got none. I got, I got them all! <laughs> What's the matter now? How do you like that? I come over here with two tickets, now I got six of them. Will you ever learn? Say, I hope you guys can pay your bill. Kitty just told me they've got a new efficiency expert here, and he's plenty tough. Uh-oh. Plenty tough? Anybody that can't pay his check winds up in the alley, all cut up and bleeding. In the alley? <laughs> cut up and bleeding? Oh, it must be a gruesome sight. You stay here and hold those checks. I'll go out and try and dig up some money. I'll pick you up later. Where? In the alley. Okay. In the alley. Mr. Warner, as my new efficiency expert, you're in complete charge. Now show me if you're as good as you say you are. Well, I've got it figured out scientifically that the customer will be in and out of here in four and a half minutes. A long time for a cigarette. After that, if he's not eating, out he goes. My boys will take care of that. Fine, fine. Oh, boss. Oh, boss. That'll be 75 cents, please. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I left my wallet home. I'll have to take care of it later. Oh, that routine again. What routine? A guy can leave his wallet at home, can he? Listen, chum, I've got to account for every check that goes in this register. Now pay up or else. I am sorry, I'll have to take care of it later. What's the trouble, buddy? I haven't got any money, so what? You haven't got any money, huh? He hasn't got any money. Cops, please. Do you know that little fat guy sitting over there alone? Oh, why, why, yes. He, he's a very prominent taxi cab man about town. He's pretty prominent sitting over there without eating. Let 
Let me see those checks. They're no good. They got holes in them. Let me see them. Three dollars and eighty-five cents. I'm a pig, huh? Are you through eating? Yes, sir. Well, why don't you pay your checks and get out? You can't sit here without eating. I'm not hungry anymore. Oh. Get out. Good evening, Mr. Warner. How about you said you weren't hungry? In between the time I said it and you heard it, I got hungry all over again. Roll it around. It's easier to eat. You don't get smacked with this one. It's a little small smack. That's all. I beg your pardon, buddy. Could you let me have... Oh, it's you. Any luck? Yes, but it's all bad. I can't raise a button. Oh, Grover! Uh, Uncle Grover! What's wrong? Something awful has happened. Finnegan is sick. Awful sick. I'm afraid it was that peppermint candy. Where is he now? They just took him home in a wagon. And now I just got to find Wilbur. Why Wilbur? Well, he's Finnegan's pal. And he always knows what to do when Finnegan is sick. We know where he is. Yes, and I think you're the answer on how to get him out. Come on, Princess. Well, let's hurry. Take him, boys. Take it easy, fellas. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Hold everything! Hold everything! They got me. Prepare to pay this check. Well, that's different. This man's a millionaire. But we can't pay this check until he goes outside and signs some legal papers. Please, mister. Couldn't I stay here for him? Well, surely. Surely you'd trust a little innocent girl like this. Well, I guess there's nothing else I can do about it. But there's one thing certain. Those checks have got to be paid. Sure. Oh, thank you. And I'll sit right here until the bill is paid. And there's the checks. All right, boys. Turn him loose. Okay. Come on, Grover. Okay, Grover. Thanks a lot. Thank you, too, Princess. You just didn't have to worry about getting paid. I just didn't have any money with me. And at home? I ain't got none there, either. Ah, <laughs> uh, wait a minute, Dad. Come on, Wilbur. You've got to cure the king's horse. Yeah, see what you can do for Finnegan. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What about the princess? Oh, Joe's taking care of that. I am not going to leave here until I know she is safe. Okay, I'll fix that. Well, who says there's never a cop in sight when you need one? What is it now? Can't you soldiers take care of yourselves? Riley, a poor little innocent Irish girl is being held in that cafeteria against her will. Did you say Irish? I just said it. Joe said it. But talking about the Irish, that big fat guy in there said, I don't like the Irish. Oh, he did, did he? Well, we'll see about this. Oh, it's you, Princess. Well, you get along home and tend to your sick horse. Now, oh, wait a minute, officer. She can't leave this restaurant till I get $4.55 and it's owed to me for food. What'd I tell you? You mean to tell me that this little girl ate up $4.55 worth of food? What's the disturbance? What's the trouble here, Warner? He's trying to say that I ate up $4.55 worth of his old food. I didn't say any such a thing, but she promised to stay here until he came back with the money. He? Who? Why, the little fat guy that came in here and ate his necktie with his spaghetti and... Necktie, spaghetti, what kind of dribble drabble is that? Oh, he's been acting queer all day... Oh, I have, have I? Well, you're fired. That suits me fine. 
Come on, Princess, we're getting... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait Officer, wait, you Just can't. a minute, Warner. You're a little too efficient for me. Not only is she fired, but you're fired. Fired? And not only will you pay me the $4.55 you claim this kid owes me, but I'm going to hold your $100 bond until I check on it. What kind of a job is this? You work for four hours, and you're out $104.55. You can't do that. Are you sure this medicine will cure Finnegan? Oh, yeah, I know all about horses, you do. Hello, boys. How's Finnegan? Oh, he's going to be all right. You poor old Harris. I do hope the horse gets well. So do I. I got to make him well. Hello. Hello, honey. How are you? Are you going to make Finnegan well? You bet your life I am. I got to. Come on. Bye-bye. And the unfortunate horse, how is he? Oh, he's got a pain in the tummy. But I'm going to make him well. You know me. Dr. Wilbur Houlihan. M.E. No, M.D. M.E. What's M.E.? Me! Come oh, We're bodies, you and me. his two front legs. No, the horse's four legs. Four legs? I said by the two front legs. Well, the horse's four legs are in front. What's those things in the back? Crutches? No, don't you understand? My horse. Here comes King. My poor old horse. Oh, Pop, you shouldn't have come over here. This weather's bad for your arthritis. Never mind my arthritis. My horse is sick. He's more important than I am. Mr. O'Hara. I'm sorry about Finnegan. I didn't know that the candy would hurt him. It never hurt me. It's all right, Wilbur, but Finnegan's getting on in years. There are some things he just can't eat anymore. I feel the same way about cucumbers. But you got nothing to worry about, Mr. O'Hara, please. Don't worry. Wilbur, give me one of those pills. I'm going to show you something. These pills never fail. I'll give one of these here to Finnegan, and he'll be up and well before you know it. He'll be pulling a hack like a two-year-old. I hope so. Yes, come on now. You run along home, and don't worry about a thing. Everything will be taken care of. What are you going to do? Well, now I'm going to give Finnegan his medicine. How? Well, you see, first of all, I take one of the hose and I put it in Finnegan's mouth like this. Open your mouth, Finnegan. Stay right there. Attaboy. Now stay like that. Now, you see, I take the capsule and I put it in the hose. Then what like do you that. do? Now he's got one in his mouth and the other end I put in my mouth. And then I blow. Watch. Come in. Hold still. Wilbur! What happened? Wait a minute, what do you want? What? Yes, I know that. You told us. Yes. Uh, yes, that's right. But what happened? The horse blew first. Oh, look! Finnegan's getting up! I gotta go tell Pop. 
Again is up again. Frisky is a pup again. Fit again is in again. Eaten is a bit again. Fit again is fit again. Chocolate is a bit again. Fit again is up again. Feeling like a pup again. Sort of mulligan stew. It's spreading uptown, downtown, east side, west side, all, all around, around Manhattan. Hear them shout. Oh, glory be, glory be. From the Hudson to Avenue D, there's a million times seven who shouted to heaven like me. Glory be. Contagious rhythm. Sort of mulligan stew. It's spreading up, down, 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 east side, west side, all around Manhattan. Hear them shout. <laughs> I'll be sure glad to see me now that I cure him. Why don't you run over and see how he feels? That's exactly what I'm going to do. Well, I want to run in here and get a cup of coffee. See you later. Okay. Oh, 
Finnegan is up again, frisky as a pup again. Finnegan is up again. Hi, Pete. Hi, Pete. Oh, Finnegan is up again. Hi, Sandy. Hello. Hello, honey. Mrs. Reed. Honest, kid. I didn't mean to do it. Oh, yes, you did. I don't want to talk to you, and nobody else wants to talk to you. Tell the boys at the stand that welcome to my regular customers. That I'll do. Sorry about your horse. Mr. O'Hara, I really don't know what to say. I'm not blaming you for anything, son. You tried to help and it just didn't work out right. You know, this hack don't look the same anymore. I'm strong. I'm going to make it up to you. I'm going to take the place of Finnegan, Mr. O'Hara. You get in, Mr. O'Hara. You get in and drive me. I'm going to take Finnegan's place. He would do the same thing for me. Thanks, Mr. Ripper, I'm afraid that won't do. That looks silly. Put it down. Silly, huh? Yeah. I'm gonna get them two people a horse if it's the last thing I do. This is one job I'm not gonna fall down on. <laughs> Gee, Grover, this is a terrible way to get money. Never mind that. You promised the princess a horse and you've got to go through with it. Spill it. Stinky Field sent us up here. Yeah. He's a good friend of Shorty McAllister's. Yeah, we want to see Big Hearted Charlie. There's Charlie over at the desk. Hello, boys. Hello. What can big-hearted Charlie do for you? I want some money. I got a rod. A stick-up! What's the matter? What's the matter, you fellas? What do you want? They're acting awful nervous, ain't they? Wait a minute, boys. Let's talk this over. What do you want? All I want to do is borrow some money on this here. That's all. A fishing rod. How do you like that? Yeah, I would like to borrow some money on that. Oh, you want to take yourself out alone? Oh, why should I take myself out alone? I don't appeal to me. Oh, keep quiet. He wants to borrow a hundred dollars. We're friends of King O'Hara. Oh, well, then you're okay, pal. I'll let you have a hundred bucks. You pay me back five dollars a week the first year and two and a half a week the second year. Five dollars the first year, a week, and then the second year, two and a half dollars a week? Come on, brother. You ain't gonna get away with that. Why you... not? Because I'm able to pay three dollars a week the second year. Oh, well, that's, that's different. Here's Look, your dough. Mister, what will happen to me if I can't make my payments? Here, I'll give you a rough idea. Why don't you let me have a report on that last guy that didn't meet his payment? Uh -oh. <laughs> right, here's your hundred dollars, boys. You got nothing to worry about. Just pay on time. That's what I was saying to my friend. He's got nothing to worry about as long as he pays on time. I'll pay on time. Mm -hmm. I don't want the money. It's him. Okay. Take the money. Take the money. Take the money. Don't push. Don't push. Take the money. Thanks ever so much. See you later. Well, boys, uh, ever play horses? Well, I was just thinking, with a little luck, you could double that hundred bucks and pay me off and still have the dough you came in for. Say, where do you bet on these horses? You got a direct line to the track in the next room. You know he's got something there. You can double your money, you won't owe anybody, and you can buy King a new horse. 
That is a very elegant idea. You like it? The only thing is, I don't know anything about playing the horses. Oh, that's simple. All you have to do is pick out a horse and put your money right on his nose. Come on, let's go inside. Come on, I'll show you how to double your money. Try your luck on the ponies, boys? No, we want to play the big horses. Well, no, 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 no. He, he wants to make a bet. Okay. One, two, don't make any slip. Three, four, we'll take a little drip. Hey, wait a minute. What's this little drip business? Just testing. Oh. Oh, testing. Hey, come to. Slicker's got an easy mark. Yeah, pick yourself a horse. Oh, okay. I'll pick a good one, too. Let me look at your form. Huh? Let me look at your form. Well, if you get a kick out of it, okay. Uh, uh, what are you doing? You asked to look at my form, didn't you? Nothing of the kind. Hey, you want to bet a lot of money? How much you going to bet? $20? Oh, no. $50? $100? How much are you going to bet? A buck. We don't take any dollar bets here. Too big for you to handle? Take any part of it. Shh, listen, bet ten dollars. Ten dollars? Ten dollars! I bet ten dollars. Ten dollars, right. Make with the coconuts. They're off! The race is over! You lose! Wait, what? Now, come on. What kind of stuff is this? Wait a minute. They're off, the race is over, I lose. I didn't even bet! I, I don't know what I'm doing! I mean, come on, run that race over again and run it! Slow motion! The man is right! Wait a minute. You know the name of the horse you bet on? That's got nothing to do with it. I mean, uh... What is the name of the horse you bet on? Well, I... Uh, well, how do you expect to win when you don't even know the name of the horse? Man's right. Oh. Man's right. Now, this time, double up on him. Bet $20. $20, my eye. My eye? That's a good horse. $20 to win. My eye. They're off. The race is over. You lose. What is this? What's coming up here? What room are we playing in? Now, wait a minute. Where, where do we stay? Just a... I mean, after all, just $20, my eye. That was... That's an expression. Give this boy a break. That's... All right, now, in the next race. There's only two horses in the race. Two horses? That's right. V for victory. Hey, can't come here. Only two horses? Yeah. Bet on both of them. You can't lose. Bet on two of them. Certainly. Can't lose. How can you lose? Okay. What's the horse's names? Jelly Bean and Lollipop. $20 on Jelly Bean. $20 on Jelly Bean. $20 on Lollipop. $20 on Lollipop. Ah. You're just in time. They're at the post. They're off. Lollipop takes the lead with Jelly Bean second. At the far turn is Lollipop and Jelly Bean. Now it's Jelly Bean and Lollipop. They're running neck and neck. Come on. Come on, Jelly Pop. You mean Lollipop. I mean Jelly Pop. I'm betting on the two of them. Now they're running the turn for home. It's Lollipop by a nose with Jelly Bean closing fast. Come on. Come on, somebody. Come on. They're in the stretch. It's Lollipop pulling away now with Jelly Bean's jockey going to the whip, but he's pulling up now. Going to be a close finish. Now they go under the wire and the winner, China Clipper. Out. Look, look, only two horses in the race. That's right. Jelly Bean and Lollipop. That's right. Out of a clear sky. <laughs> China Clipper. <clears throat> That's enough. All right, but wait, wait a minute. Minute. That's enough. Wait a minute, boys. Now in the last race. That was my last race. Just a minute. There's only one horse in the race. I wouldn't bet if there was no horses in the race. My horse mother the... always told me never to bet horses. How are you going to lose with one horse in the race? I don't care if there was no horse in the race. What's the horse's name? Mattress. Come on, make yourself a fortune. Only one horse? One horse in the race. Mm. <laughs> one horse. One. Put $10 on a nose. $10 on a nose. Put $10 on a tail. $10 on a tail. Here's another $10. What for? Put, put it under the saddle. What's that for? In case the horse comes in sideways. Uh oh. <laughs> Here's where we take the rest of the bankroll. Now I got you. There's only one horse in the race. They're off in a bunch. Off in a bunch. There's only one horse in the race. How can they all be off in a bunch? Only one horse in the race. Get the other horses off the track. Hey, you. The other horses, get off the track, will you? At the half, it's mattress and going strong. Come on, mattress, come on. At three quarters, mattress. Three quarter mattress. <laughs> now she's coming into the stretch. It's mattress with only a furlong to go. She's pulling away now as mattress comes down to the wire and the winner. Just a minute, folks. It's a photo finish. Photo finish? How can it be a photo finish? Only one horse in the race. Lollipop just came in from the last race. Eat it, boys. It's a race. A race? What do you mean? mean? Somebody took off the car. Well, he can't do this. Why well, think this job was going to be steady? Out the back, babe. Hold all bets. Till we get the results of the photo finish. You mean I still have a chance to win? You said it. Mattress wins by a nose. Pay off the little drip, $200. Okay. But I smell a rat. What are you looking at me for? Excuse me. And don't forget what Barnum said about suckers. You can fool some of the people some of the time, and some of the time, most of the time, somebody's got to get it. 
one way or the other. And another thing, you can lead a horse to water, but you can still only go 35 miles an hour. <laughs> Come on. Hey, Abby Charlie, here's your hundred dollars back. Well, what happened? The drip got the drop on the troop. Give me back my rod. Come on. Come on. See? Shit. Sorry. Now that you've got enough money to buy the horse, hold on to it. I'm going inside here, look at a telephone book, and find out where they sell horses. And please, don't let anyone chip you out of that money. Nobody's gonna chisel me out of this money, brother. Right. I worked too hard to get this one. Right here. Hello, mister. Hey. What a beautiful animal that is. Where could I buy a horse like that? That's funny. I have just been wondering to whom I could sell them to. Are you kidding? You want to sell them? What a beautiful horse! What's the letters on a saddle? P.D.? P.D. Why, that's his initials. He belongs to the John Law Stables. A pedigree horse? Certainly. I'll give you a hundred dollars for him. Well, I don't know. I love this little horse like a brother. I'll give you my fishing rod besides. Well, you got a deal. Go ahead, there's a hundred. Hey, brother, yeah. come here. How, how do I know there's lots of life in this horse? Are you kidding? If he doesn't move fast enough, just blow that whistle and you'll get action more than someone. That's what I want to find out. I want to find out if P.T. has got plenty of spirit. What happened? What are you blowing that for? Was there an accident? Was what anybody there, there, fella? What did you do now? I just bought a horse. That's a cop's horse. Of course. Anybody knows it's a cop's horse. I mean, after all, that's what that P.D. Yes. P.D.? Yes. Cop's horse. Certainly. Hey, what's going on down there? Leave that horse alone! The other way. The other... Come on, get away from there! Well, how do you like that guy tried to steal my horse? Imagine that. What did he look like? He was a little short, fat guy. I saw him, officer. He was trying to take the horse out, and he was blowing a whistle. That's Woo! right. He looked something like you, only he was a little guy. Yeah, I'm tall. Sure. See? All right, bring it up. Bring it. Come on, bring it up, Ryan. Imagine oh, bring it up. Bring it up. How do you like that? Come on. You are with the police for saying now. Bring it up. Bring it up. Everybody, go home. How do you like that? Yeah, yeah. This is yours, thanks. Hey! How could you be dumb enough to buy a cop's horse? Now you're broke again, you still haven't got a horse. Hey, wait a minute. How do you like... No! Uh, Excuse me, I'm awful sorry, but there's a say in those papers there where you can get a good carriage horse. No, these dope sheets just give you the horse's records. Like if a horse has an X in front of his name, that shows he's a mutter. How can a he be a mutter? Ain't a she always a mutter? No, certainly not. Sometimes a he makes a better mutter than a she. A he makes a better mutter than a she? Sure. How can you tell if a horse is a mutter? By looking at his feet. Ain't we living in a wonderful age? Woo! Mutter or father? I gotta have a horse. Yes, he wants a horse to pull a hack. A hack horse? Sure. You know the horse is T-Biscuit's roommate. His companion, as it were. You mean Boimo? I hear they're trying to give him away. That's right. I read in the papers where the first guy that calls for him can have him. Give him away? Yes, sir. You can have him? Yes. Oh, the princess is going to get a horse. Where is this horse? Up at the Empire track. He used to pull a carriage, didn't he, boys? Yeah. Oh, boys. Thanks, fellas. Come on, Grover. Thanks a lot, boys. Those guys was kidding about that free horse. I don't know. See that light in the window over there? Find out if there's anyone in. Find out if anybody's there? Yeah. Hey! Anybody in? Here, here. How, how are they gonna hear me? They're way over there. Well, walk over there. Knock on the door? That's it. Knock on No, don't knock on the door. Look in the window. Sneak. That's it. Go ahead. Go ahead. sound like just the type of efficiency man I've been looking for. Well, I don't like to brag, Colonel Brainerd, but uh, my last job was finished in less than four hours. It's quite a responsibility, you know, owning the world's fastest racehorse. What's the matter, Warner? Hey, come here. Come on, man. What's Let's the matter? get out of here. What's wrong? I just saw that guy Warner from the restaurant. What are you worrying about? Come on, come on. Now listen, you're down here to get a horse, and you're going back with one. There's your horse over there, Boy Mel. Come on, let's go over and get him. Go ahead, get the horse. Okay, excuse me, please. I want to make, if you don't mind. Huh? I say, excuse me, please. 
He's a dumb horse. There you are. I mean, after all, I'll get tough. What do you want to do? Huh? What are you going to do? I'm going to do this legitimate. I owe you one horse. Well, if you want to be that way, sign your name. Then they got me. No, 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 no. Come on, your right name. Your right name. That's... All right, get the horse. Well, I can swear I just saw the face of a man I hate most in all the world. Oh, well, this track is situated in country Washington Irving wrote about. Remember Sleepy Hollow? Yeah, yeah. Well, some nights you're liable to see the headless horseman around here. Well, well just the same, I'm gonna take a look around. Mind if I take this flashlight? Nice to see the princess happy again. Now I can hold my head up. Made in Japan. That's the closest hit they'll ever make around here. What are you wearing? What am I wearing? It's my hair. No, that's it. Oh, I just played at a victory garden. Oh, get over there. Don't sit hit, down. Don't sit hit, down. Paper? Morning paper. Thank you. Don't you think you better wash the dishes? Gee, I never thought of that. Peepers get kidnapped. Oh, no. I still don't know where you boys got that horse, but I'm proud of you. Say, when we go out for a horse, we get a horse. You certainly do. Uh oh Wilma, where'd you get that horse you gave the king? I... Come on, now tell me. Out with it. Where did you get that horse? <laughs> oh, huh. Never mind that. Wilbur, now come on, tell me. Where did you get that horse? Can I help it if horses like Boy Mel follow me home? If it were Boy Mel, it might not be so bad. Look at this. Oh, I mean... Uh oh let me see that. It's propaganda. Propaganda, that's what it is. Let me see that. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I mean, after all, let me read it myself because I... It's my... I made it myself, you know. 
Miss Print. Tea biscuit kidnapped. Apparently the marauder came to steal tea biscuit, but through an error got into Boymel's stall. But actually stole tea biscuit, since tea biscuit was not in his own stall, but in Boymel's stall. They can't pin it on me. I mean, I can't help it if they put the wrong horse in the right place. Stall. Stall? Mm. One more time? Quiet. Well, look, there's only one thing to do. Put the horse back or all of us will get into trouble. She's right, boys. Let's find the king and keep this before somebody recognizes him. Hey, look, I'll tell you what I can do. I'll get the horse, I'll put him in the trunk, and I'll send him down to Grand Central Station, and we'll send him away by slow straight. By what? By straight slow. What are you talking I'll about? Send him up. Send him out of town! Express! Express! Give him I ain't trouble. You've got me into now. Horse thief. Grover? Will you write to me in the guardhouse? Sure I will. Oh, quit worrying. Everything's going to be all right. Look, Pat. One. I got exactly 42 hours left to put a show together, and I got no show. Two. The boys stole the world's greatest racehorse, and King O'Hara disappears with him. The boys will be back with them any minute. You hope. Stole the world's greatest racehorse. Oh! Here are the boys now. Did you find out anything about King O'Hara? Yes, he's heading for Saratoga. Saratoga? One of the other cabbies just told me he was driving a drunk up there with arthritis for the cure. Now we're really in trouble. You said it. And we gotta get that horse back from King before he goes to jail. And the most important thing is we mustn't let the princess know anything about how we gotta fight on the jam. Ain't that right, princess? Because it would break her heart. Break her heart. Oh. oh, Wilbur. You didn't have to steal a horse for us. Papa and I could have gotten along somehow. I'm sorry, princess. When we took the horse, we didn't know it was Steve Biscuit. We thought it was his playmate. The whole thing is a mistake. Won't be any mistake when they take Pop to jail. I feel terrible. If I was a man, I'd cry. Me too. Oh, honey, you gotta pull yourself together and wipe those tears. I wanna save that big one right here for some other time. What are you all standing here like dopes for? We gotta get to Saratoga so we can keep a fighter from going to jail. But Wilbur... You shut up! I mean... I got away with it. Look, all I want to do is find out who's got enough money for gas. Don't look at me. All I got is troubles. Honey, hiding anything in your stockings outside of those gorgeous legs? Well, I haven't got a job. I need a new pair of shoes, and my rent is due Sunday. But if $17 gets us to Saratoga, it's yours. Why, Kitty? Why, I wouldn't think of it. Why, $17 will buy enough gas to get to Saratoga. We're off for Saratoga. Oh, come on. Okay. What are you going that way for? Saratoga's over this way. Come on, we got to pack our grips. Come on. Ooh. Saratoga. Oh, what's the difference? As long as we ain't gonna pay. Come on, turn it back, Skid. Well, we still got four tires. That's all. We had four tires. At least nothing else can happen. Grover, there goes my car. Never mind the car. We've got work to do. Princess, you check into this hotel. Kitty and I'll take all the streets running north and south while we look for Tea Biscuit. Wilbur, you and Grover take all the east-west streets. Okay. okay. Nice looking horse. Ah, uh, he's a beauty. When my old horse died, this one was gifted to me. Hey, Kitty! That's Kitty. Kitty. Hello! Hello, oh, Kitty! <laughs> boy, am I glad to see you. I miss you, Oh, Kitty, old oh boy. Best friend a kid ever had. What a friend. There is... Hi, stranger. Oh. Uh, no, come here, son. Hello. This is the lad what gifted me the horse. He's a real friend. Real friends are hard to find nowadays. You two ought to hang together. Yeah, he was in on it. Quiet. 
Uh, King, we thought maybe you'd like to trade this horse in for a better one, don't you think? No, sir. I wouldn't trade him for a tea biscuit. You don't have to. Shut up! Gee, he does look like tea biscuit. You know them stupid New York cops are still looking for him? If he was here in Saratoga, I bet you I could lay my hand on him just like that. Hey, 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 Bernie, Bernie. What do you mean, Bernie, Bernie? That's a hot horse. A hot horse? Yeah, he was leaning over a hot stove all day. Yeah? Oh. Well, you never find tea biscuit pulling a hack anyway. <laughs> no, you'd never find tea biscuit pulling a hack. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, don't tip off the cop, will you? <laughs> I'm no stone pigeon. <laughs> stool pigeon? All right. All right, come on. Just heck for hire. Sure. Climb in, boys. This plugger will take you wherever you're going. He's a plug, all right. You can always tell a racehorse by the way he reacts to a bugle. <laughs> So you see, King, I didn't know it was tea biscuit. That's why we got to get him back. Yeah. It breaks my heart, but it's the right thing to do. Meantime, I have to keep him undercover. Undercover? But where? Undercover? I know just the place. Sent nuts. Maybe you can afford to turn on the reward of 10 grand for T-Biscuit, no questions asked, but not me. Sure, didn't we tell this little squid Wilbur about Boymo? And ain't T-Biscuits under the sheets in Boymo's caboose that night? And don't the landlady tell us they suddenly hot-footed for the Oaks Hotel in Saratoga? And ain't this the Oaks Hotel? I'm turning the T-Biscuits up here, and that blubber's got him by the tail. Sure. Hey, ain't that Wilbur's taxi? That it is. Gentlemen, we are in the satchel. Shall we register? Why not? Now, Mr. Warner, I hope you can get this hotel on an efficient basis without undue loss of time. You have nothing to worry about, Mr. Doyle, I assure you. I wasn't on my last job two hours and a half before I got action. Well, the best of luck to you. Come on, Come on. What are you doing? Put that down. Put that down. What do you hey, mean, what am I doing? What are these things? What you told me yesterday, to disguise the horse. I put glasses on. Oh, come on. We've got to get going. Yeah, We've got to meet Kitty and Joe and the princess. Yeah, I know. We've got to get that horse back. But I insist. Room 230 did order a bale of hay and a bag of oats. But, my dear Hicks, I'm only going to check up on this in order to humor you. What does that look like? Grass growing in a hotel corridor? Well, could be birdseed. Uh oh Look, tea biscuit. Oh. Hey, if anybody should ask you your name from now on, it's Smith. Uh, who is it? This is Smith. No, 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 no. Who is it? Mr. Warner, the hotel manager. Oh, Warner. That's... That's Warner. it. That's all. That's, that's enough. That's the guy that's been haunting us. Get over there and stall him. I'll take the horse out Smith. the window. Smith. Smith. Don't forget, Smith. Go on, stall him. Stall him. There's something phony here. Use your pass key. Get in there. Hey, go over. Wait a minute. Go on and... Wait stall. a minute. Stall him. Let's you and I go out the window. Let the horse here. Go on over and stall him. I mean, but... Get a hold of one of these feet. We'll take him out. All right. No. Woo! Ah, Sabi, Sabi. You wish to see your guy? <laughs> Hold your mouth, hold it. I think we're going to have some trouble here. Go and get the house detective. <laughs> you cannot go in this room. This is my wife's room. Mrs. Yogai. Winnie Yogai. <laughs> Winnie, don't! Don't, Winnie! Your wife. Why you didn't register a wife? I got married after we registered. Oh, you did. Well, get out of here. Let me in now. Don't push, don't push! How do you do? Sir, you have nothing to worry about. As your wife's position, I predict a very healthy child. Thank you. What is that? 
I told my wife if she want boy, knock on wood. A boy. Twins. Isn't your wife pretty active under the circumstances? Oh, well, yeah, she's strong like horse. Like a horse? She is a horse. Hey, don't you call my horse a wife. I don't go for that. Now I know you. Close the door. No need you hiding in there. I'll stay here if it takes me all summer. Just hold on to us. I don't... What's the matter? Hold on to that door. Come in. Uh, can I go through your window? I'm the hotel manager. They've got an unregistered horse in the next apartment. Did you say horse? Yes. These parties next door with a horse. One of them a little fat guy, and the other a hatchet face? I think they'd answer that description. Listen, citizen, we'd like to talk to you for a minute. We've got a way for all of us to split up 10,000 sardines. Come on, let go. I'll go in. No, no. Let go. No, don't. Get your hand off there. Come on, the coast is clear. OK. Put my shoes on. Yeah, hurry up. Oh, come on, Mr. Warner. If you lock the boys up, we lose the reward. What do you say? We take the horse, split the 10 grand, and that gives you the revenge and a good profit. Well, I'd like to commit mayhem on them, but... Do it after we collect. Yeah, advance us the $200 so we can buy the nag, and we'll pay you back after we get the moolah. It's a deal, boys. Leave everything to me. I know just what to do. Don't tell me that's that guy again. In the end, boys, it's all been a dreadful mistake. Oh, oh boy. We can't get out of here with that guy at the door. No. And we can't take that horse down the fire escape. Hey, I got an idea. If you don't open this door, I'll call the cops. What are you going to do? Oh, this is room 230. What do you do? What do you want? I don't know. Wait a minute. Oh, there it is. Hello. This is room 230. Give me the room across the hall. Hey, you. You better stop beating that woman, or I'll throw you out of this hotel. Who was beating what woman? I got no woman in my room. Now, listen, you. Don't talk back to me. I'll put you right in that nose. Who is this talking? This is the hotel manager. Ah, oh, the hotel manager, eh? Well, I'll be right down to get that punch in the nose. Never mind. You don't have to come down. I'm right across the hall, and I'm waiting for you, brother. What is this all about? Time will tell. Are you the hotel manager? Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Hold this for me. Oh. Come on, everything's clear. Come on, Smitty. Come on, guys, let's see what makes with the high finance. Opportunities is knocking. Hey, something's gone wrong. Yeah, what's the matter? What happened? <laughs> what happened? Here's Wilbur now. What kept you so long? What happened? Never mind that. We've got to get rid of this horse. Yeah, the hotel manager swore us. He had a scowl on his face, just like this. Hmm? Smitty, show him. That's the way he looks. Okay. Come on, let's get it. Hitch him up fast. The hack is around the corner. Oh, here they come. Wait a minute, boys! It's all but a terrible well, there! Come on, they want to talk to us. Yeah, we got business. What can we do for you? We don't want any trouble. We ought to buy that horse. Buy him? But you can't buy that horse. That's... I don't care who it is. I'll give $500 for him and take all the responsibility. 500 bucks? That's the money for your show. Come on, throw those pillars away. Shake a leg. Huh? Shake a leg. No, throw them away. Hurry up, get in here, get in. Hey, here comes Warner. Where? Hurry up. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You ain't here. Wilbur! Wilbur! Hey! Wilbur, get out! Go! Go on and try. Hurry up. Hello, Rover. Go on!
you just watch out. What's wrong now? What is he doing? I don't know. Come on. Let's uh, do this shit. Hey, here they come. Come on, will you? Here they come. Saratoga Handicap. The winner will take down a purse of approximately $50,000. It's a capacity crowd here today, but there's one sad note in the festivities. Colonel Brainerd's great horse, Tea Biscuit, is still missing. Must be some mistake, Colonel Brainerd. They got Tea Biscuit on the tote board at 100 to 1, and the horse ain't even running. No. It's no mistake, Shorty. I ended him for sentimental reasons. I just can't think of him as lost. Well, come on, let's go watch the race, Colonel. No, not for me, Shorty. I just haven't got the heart to watch it without tea biscuit running. Hey, tea biscuit! I'm no jockey! How do you like that? Throws me up in the air and then catches me. <laughs> hey, put a shadow on, too! <laughs> Come on, tea biscuit. Why didn't you put a saddle on Rhubarb when you heard the bugle? I put a saddle on it. Does this look like a saddle? Now hurry up. Rhubarb, this is the first time I've ever seen you with nervous perspiration. Just a minute. Who's paying for the hack? Oh, only one lamp that goes out at the pay for it. You wait for us. We'll go back. Come on, hurry up. Okay, that's nine tickets, sir. Well, can I pay for it here? Not here, sir. The ticket office right outside. Well, well you wait here till I get back. All right, Rhubarb. They always said you looked enough like Tea Biscuit to be his twin brother. Let's see you run as fast as he does. This is a now leaving the saddling enclosure for the running of the Saratoga Handicap. And here they come on the track for the parade past the grandstand. Look, there's Uncle Wilbur. One. Go! Oh, hey, brother! Come here! There's a horse in this race that don't belong here. Yeah, that's yeah. what they all say. Now get off the I'm track. Hey, Wilbur. Wilbur. I have to get off the track. Hey, that means you too. Keep back. off the track before someone puts a saddle on you. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, we are repeating at this time that Tea Biscuit has been entered in this race only for sentimental reasons. Colonel Brainerd advises us that his great horse is still missing and will not run in the race. He asks that you do not bet on Tea Biscuit. I don't imagine anyone in this crowd anticipates throwing away $2 on a horse that isn't going to run. But you know what Barnum said. It looks like he is in the race. And with Wilbur riding him. He's still the best horse, even with Wilbur up. What am I saying? What am I... What am I waiting for? Hey, Warner. Do you want to buy that horse that Wilbur's riding? I certainly do. How do I know you'll pay? Well, you got my word for it. Your word's not enough. How about a deposit? All right. $100? $100 is all right. All right, there's your money. Get me the nag. You get it. Come on, Princess. Hey, where are you going? I've got to see a man about a horse. Here it is. You wait right here. Yes, 
You're nuts. He ain't running. I know. Sentimental reasons. Well, I'm sentimental, too. That's why I'm betting a hundred bucks right on his nose. Okay, it's your dough. Excuse me, folks. I gotta go now. The horses are nearing the starting gate. And Starter Callahan is getting him in the position of the big race. Rhubarb, take it easy. Rhubarb, pick up there. Having a little trouble with rhubarb, but his jockey's calming him down, yes, and he'll be moving into position any second now. Holy smokes. There's only one horse I know that's got a white mark on his left ear. No wonder you acted like Tea Biscuit. You are Tea Biscuit. Now I know we're going to win this race. As you know, this is a mile and a half race, and the horses will pass the grandstand twice. Now all the horses are in the starting gate, except Happy Lady. Let's take another quick look at the tote board before the horses are off. Ladies and gentlemen, you look at the tote board. I see it, but I don't believe it. Some of my tea biscuit had just placed a bet of $100 on him to win, regardless of the fact that the horse is not running. No doubt Colonel Brainerd made the bet himself for sentimental reasons. Yes, sir. I think it's the first time that tea biscuit has been entered in a race and only one pair of mutual ticket was bought on him. Now, back to that starting gate. Happy lady standing quietly in the stall, and they should be on their way any second now. What are you doing here? Get off the track. What is this, a fox hunt? Get off that track. All lined up, watch it. What's that? It looks like another number five is in the race. Oh, if you win this race, I'll, I'll introduce you to a beautiful girl horse. Now, wait a minute. He wants to give you $500 for this horse. For stealing it? No. No, no. I'm giving you $500 so I can recover it. Here's your $400. With the $100 advance I gave your partner, that makes $500. Thanks a lot, Mr. Warner. And from now on, he's going to be your horse. He ain't mine anymore. He was good. Mr. Warner will introduce you to that girl horse. What a horse. 
must be girl crazy. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait for us. Yeah, we're what gonna... is it? Come on, give Joe the money. What for? Well, you know what for. For the show. Certainly. Here you are, Joe. For the show. Thanks, boys. That's great. I've got just enough time to fly to New York and bring everyone up here. Ladies and gentlemen, please hold your paramutual tickets. There's an inquiry into the result of the last race. Colonel Brainerd, that wasn't Rhubarb that won the race. That was Tea Biscuit. They're holding up the mutual payoff. Oh, you're drunk, Shorty. Why, well, I just paid that man Warner $10,000 reward for returning Tea Biscuit. Then you got gypped. You know that broken back tooth Rhubarb has? Yeah. Well, the horse that won the race ain't got it. What? Give me the First National Bank. I want to stop payment on the check, but fast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have the results of the inquiry into the last race. The winner was not Rhubarb. But the track officials have asked me to announce that all those holding tickets on Rhubarb will have their money refunded. Now don't ask me how, when, or why, but the winner was the one and only Tea Biscuit. Wouldn't I like to be the holder of the only ticket that was bought on Tea Biscuit? Because that lucky gent is going to collect himself exactly $10,000. Fine day this has been. The greatest racehorse in the world goes to the post at 101 and loses the race. Thanks to you. Guess he was carrying too much weight. Yeah, sure. Look, do you see that? Opportunity. Torn in half. And out the window. All your fault. I'm sorry. Yeah, you should be sorry. But I don't like to bore you off like this all the time. Don't bore me out anymore, Clover, because every time you do it, hurts me. I know it does. I know it's not your fault. I know I do a lot of wrong things. Well, we'll forget about it. But be a good boy from now on. Do things right, then I won't have to bore you out. I'll you? only get up on the right side of the bed from now on. That's the boy. As long as you do things right, we can... Now, ah, look at you doing there. You see, you're starting it all over again. Go answer the door. It might be Warner. It won't do no good. We're signed up at Universal. No, oh, I answer the door. Wilbur, it's Kitty. Let me in. Kitty? Yes, Wilbur, this is Colonel Brainerd. I'm Tea Biscuit's owner. I'm looking for Grover Mockridge. Grover Mockridge? He's not here. He's had nothing to do with it. Furthermore, I did it all by myself. I and I alone. Well, if he's the gentleman who bought the $100 ticket on Tea Biscuit, he wins $10,000. <coughs> he wins $10,000? When Grover hears this, he'll faint. He heard it. Grover! Grover! Grover, wake up! You're a $10,000 millionaire. Will you go away and let me die in peace? You know I threw the tickets out the window. Did, didn't he? Move over. Wilbur, isn't that the ticket there? Wait, I got it. I got it. Come here. I got him. Come here. I got him. I had him. Oh. He's got him. $10,000. That's $20 a piece, huh? $20 a piece. I'll give you $30. Come on. Okay. Thank you for the lovely present, Wilbur. It's a pleasure, Mr. O'Hara. Finnegan III's a splendid base, and the carriage is the finest I've ever driven in my life. <laughs> Where to, gentlemen? Uh, the Oaks Hotel Ballroom. No swear to horses. When you're feeling zero, hey there, buddy. Are you a hero or a fudded duddy? Step inside and we'll assure you, though no vocal ever cure you, can go wrong. With a grateful playful of music and a tuneful spoonful of song. Say it with music, let's start a new style. Hang your troubles on a rainbow, smile, buddy, smile. Just take an old clothespin, reach up to the sky. Hang your troubles on a rainbow, swing into high. Come on, let's all sing a toast to the ones we love the most. To Tom, Dick, and Harry, and the Yankee girls they're gonna marry. I'm betting on blue sky, a hundred to one. Hang your troubles on a rainbow, tip your heart to the sun. 
Well, Warner, lucky for us, you're in the money again. Well, the blind child picks up an acre now and then. Oh, I'll tell you, Warner. Mr. Warner, it seems you and I have made a serious mistake. The horse you returned to us was not tea biscuit. What? Naturally, under the circumstances, we've had to stop the $10,000 check we gave you. It seems we had tea biscuit in our stables all the time. Isn't that amusing? <laughs> you already gave those three hoodlums their cut. Well, I've been robbed. Look here, you tricked me. You sold me the wrong horse. I, I, I didn't even know it was the wrong horse. You bought the horse he rode. The lad's quite right. Let me explain. Hey, never mind about trying to explain anything to me. I don't even know you. I'm out $7,000, and you guys have got it. Now, I want it. Try and get it. Yeah. Look, you're the cause of the whole thing. You sold me the horse. Well, I'll get my money back. I'll have to take it out of your hide. Hide? Yes, hide. That's an excellent suggestion. Who cares? That's what I say. 